stories from our beloved callers and news and views from around our base out here among the stars. Like I said, your tight beam to radio and nostalgia from Mars. Breathe easy, kick back, and reminisce. Proto 2021, a long-lost Earth Day anthem recently discovered in the archives here on Mars. That should take most of us back to the days when Mars was nothing but an evening star in the sky and large social gatherings were still normal and carefree. Speaking of carefree, look out for three new OMAS flavors, pink, green and yellow. Pure calm in a tube. Moving on, as always, we've collected some stories from our beloved callers, and up first is a young man who might just be the luckiest one of us all. События, воспоминания, старые добрые времена, оригинальные источники, подлинные истории, надежда, вдохновение, драма, радио ностальгия с Марса. I nearly missed the book to Mars. I mean, the rumours about something big happening in Alphaville had been floating for a few years, and of course it was impossible to separate fact from fiction. 
At that time I barely made it through insurgent territory to this floating ghetto about an hour away from Alphaville by motorboat. I won't go into detail, but the crew I ran with bribed an outpost guard to go have a really long piss, where we used his comms to access their infranet. Their information turned out just as distorted as ours, but we found one channel that changed everything. Some bright spark in Alphaville had made colour-coded spreadsheets of shipping data a monkey could understand. Imports into Alphaville were off the charts, while exports had zeroed out completely. I mean nothing was coming out, even on the black market, which incidentally was fully accounted for, meaning it had to be sanctioned all along. So we knew something was up. Of course Alphaville media spun this situation heavily. The insurgents were blamed for everything, disrupting supply lines, stealing aid and so on. But it was really Alphaville stockpiling on a scale unseen in modern history. What tipped us off that they were planning to leave Earth is what they were stockpiling. Fuel, fuel, fuel. Specifically, dinitrogen, tetroxide and hydrazine. Old school. But their chemicals used as rocket fuel. They're easy to store, but they're highly toxic and require careful handling, which explained another gruesome discovery. The covert shipping and dumping of bodies. A lot of bodies. There were so many that some of those bodies had started washing up in our neighbourhood. So toxic, even scavengers stayed away. Coincidentally, it suddenly became much easier to get a multi-day work pass into Alphaville. We were so hungry and focused on other resources, we didn't make the connection. We assumed the workers were skipping on the visa. In fact, I was planning to do the exact same thing. So actually, I lucked out. I'm a small guy, and Alphaville was so strapped for labour at that point that I was given an unscreened pass and ended up in heavy labour, moving enormous containers into storage with mechanical suits. But it didn't fit them, so I was just given a scanner instead and told to scan serial numbers all day. It was very hard to breathe, so I traded for a spare hazmat suit from a drunk guard and put it on. Not unusual at all to hang out all day in a hazy. Technically just walking outside required one those days. That's what saved me, twice. Whew, I mean hindsight is 2020, but those containers were the rocket fuel. And in no way was it being stored and transported safely. All those guys died, withered to skin and bone. Nasty stuff. Again, it was all hidden in plain sight. Hell, we were all skin and bone at that point. We just assumed everyone was starving. I only got onto one of the last ships up to Mars because I was in a hazmat suit and holding that scanner, which I think had stopped working within the first days of my assignment. I never told anyone and no one ever asked. I guess I was confused with security or something. All I remember is being yelled at, rushed into a shuttle and then everyone patting me on the back and calling me Scully. The name embedded in the biometrics of the suit. I never saw my crew or the sky again. Radiating Delta from Mars. Wow, what amazing luck to be in the right suit at the right time. Just goes to show, dressing appropriately for the job can really go a long way. Speaking of dressing appropriately, here's a Mars fun fact. Despite an average temperature of well below minus 80 degrees centigrade, if you step outside without a suit on, you won't freeze to death, your blood will boil. That's due to the low atmospheric pressure outside. So please maintain your suits properly and follow decontamination protocols strictly at all times when returning from extra habitat activities. No suit, no life as we say. Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Right, how about a 21st century love song remixed for the 22nd? Who's watching who? Espionage or true love? I guess we'll never really be quite sure. KGB 
Forever your best words mine will be I watch you as you're watching me Play for the camera, no privacy You spy on me as I spy on you To check your messages Orgasm as the world And this catastrophe Through voyeuristic Melancholy You spy on me As a spy That only the agency can see No place for us to hide No room for love to be No place for us to hide No room for love to be You are my stats and I'm your KGB Forever your password's mine will be I watch you as you're watching me Play for the camera, no privacy You spy on me as I spy on you